Yay. Um, okay, welcome to the candidate briefing um, for NUS rep and academic rep. Um, I'm Tash Crump, Democracy and Representation Manager. My pronoun is she, her. And I'm Arthur Kadu. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I'm the academic representation coordinator. You've probably heard a lot about me, emailed you guys, but yeah, you'll hear more about the um, candidate briefing. And Tash, over to you. Yeah, so basically we're just going to go through um, what the aims of the briefing are um, and what you can expect from the briefing. So we're going to go through the timeline and logistics, rules and expectations, voting, how does the voting work? So looking at the single transferable voting system um, and then campaigning, looking after yourself. And finally, um, an opportunity will we'll tell you basically how you can ask us questions and how you can send us over any questions at the end. Um, but this will all also be in the email that you'll receive um, along with the link to this briefing. Um, so yeah, we'll crack on. Uh, first of all, thank you. By standing in the election, uh, you are ensuring that Cambridge students have as we love to call it a thriving democracy um and they're also well represented so whether you're going for the nus rep position or the academic rep position you're doing and playing your part in democracy and in the representation of students um and also by engaging with students about cambridge through the elections you'll show them how they can shape their education the su the university and then the national agenda so thank you very much the roles that you're running for. Um, so firstly, NUS rep, you'll be representing Cambridge students on a national level at NUS conference and attending other workshops or NUS officer accountability sessions um, as a representative. Um, and we'll go into this uh, other section um, in a little bit more detail in a second. And then as aside from the national level, let's bring it back to Cambridge, right? Cambridge students and Cambridge University, how do you represent them? You're running for academic rep, um, rep um, roles, these different um, segments to that. So you've got the school reps who represent students to their school. Um, I can see Tasha has moved to the next slide, but if Tasha can please go oh, back sorry. to the previous slide. It's fine. It's okay. You know, um, Tash is very excited to just show you everything that's going on. Um, but yeah, Tash, we'll go back to the previous slide. I have. No, you've not. Oh, oh, have you? Oh, there you are. Yeah, it's come back. Sorry, the internet is a bit slow from my end. Um, so yeah, um, as I was saying, um, the school rep, um, you represent students um, or students in your school um, to coordinate between subject reps in their school um, to raise issues affecting students in their school and escalate issues from faculties to departments and attend um, and vote at student council, which will go into details if you attended um, student council last night um, as a normal student, then you know how student council works. And then you've got the subject um, reps. Um, those are the um, reps who represent students to their faculty or department. Um, what you do there, you consult students and gather feedback slash opinions, run campaigns on issues um, affecting students in their subject and build communities um, of students. Some of the roles are restricted, obviously, to undergrad or postgrad students uh, and standard roles have self-definition um, requirements which obviously means that all students can vote in um, NUS rep um, elections. Only students within schools can uh, vote for school reps. And then um, the other thing that you need to remember is only students within specific departments slash faculties can vote for subject reps. We'll go into much details uh, into that. Uh, I know it's a lot to unpack, um, but yeah, over to Tash. Yeah, so um, specifically on the NUS rep section, um, NUS, rep, NUS require that 50%, um, which is rounded down, of the um, representatives that we send to NUS National Conference define as having womanhood as part of their identity. So in our case, where we have seven places, at least three of the delegates have to have womanhood as part of their identity. Um, the elections are conducted as per the rules of um, single transferable vote. So this will be explained in a later slide um, with two additional rules. So if excluding a woman candidate would mean that there are less than three remaining women, they are passed over and the candidate with the next lowest number of votes is excluded. If at any point candidates who do not define as women have won four places, all remaining candidates who do not self-identify as women are excluded and then the count proceeds as normal. So this is how we will be doing the count on the vote when we when we count the vote basically after um, 
after it's all closed. Um, to be considered for this, you must self-identify as a woman um, on our website. Uh, you can do this by going onto the election site and then um, going onto your profile section. We will not assume that anyone who does not self-identify via the website qualifies for the gender reserved places. So please do go onto the profile section um, of the website on the election um, on the election platform and you will be able to self-identify there. If you have any questions about this, please, um, please just send them over. Um, as I said, the email address will be in the email that we'll send over to you. So yeah, don't hesitate to get back in contact with us about this. Manifesto deadlines. Arthur, back to you. Thank you. Manifestos. I've looked at some of your manifestos and they're absolutely fantastic. So thank you to everyone who submitted their manifestos. We've still got a deadline of um, Thursday at midday. So please, please, if you haven't submitted your manifesto, just listen out and submit your manifestos. Um, so as I said, um, the deadlines on Thursday at midday uh, and your manifesto obviously should have um, a good, nice image on it. Um, some of the images I've seen, they are fantastic. Or should I say all of them are fantastic. Um, images should just be a picture of you. This is because they get um, resized quite small for, for the ballot. Um, slogans must uh, be submitted by manifesto deadline and less than 20 words. Um, your manifesto must be typed into the box on the form, which you should um, already have a link to. Um, and all text on the manifesto must be um, readable as typed text. Um, and then obviously your manifesto can feature images, links, and so on. Um, your manifesto should represent you. Um, it's like a CV. Um, how do you? How are you trying to sell yourself? How are you trying to get students to actually vote for you? Um, or what are you trying to campaign for? Um, you can also include a design version of your manifesto. This should be in um, the manifesto box on the form along with the text version. And the final thing is please, please, please make sure you only have 500 words because um, Tash and myself and um, the Democratic um, Committee will send it back if it's if it's more than 500 words. If it's 501, we'll still send it back. But um, all of you who've submitted your manifestos, you've done a fantastic job. So the Democracy Committee, um, the Democracy Committee, we have the returning officer, which is Archie McCann, who is a student. Other student members of the Democracy Committee include Sarah Anderson, who is the Student Chair Council, um, Anushka Kale, who was elected last night as one of the student members, and then Varish Patrap, who is our um, president for the po for postgraduate students um, and then I am the support staff for the democracy committee um, so the role of the democracy committee is to oversee the operation of the elections to ensure that elections are fair and equal and implement the rules and guidance in relation to the elections so if there are any rule breaks or anything that happens um, it will be down to the democracy committee to decide how to proceed with them but we will go through that later in this candidate briefing right um and again as tash said from the beginning thank you very much to everybody who submitted their um, nomination on time um nominations opened on monday um and they closed today at 12 o'clock so thank you everybody who um followed um, our timeline um and obviously as you're watching this you've been uh, your nomination was received and welcomed um candidate briefing it will be sent to you guys um as soon as uh, possible um by um tomorrow midday you should receive the candidate briefing uh, manifesto deadline as i said in my previous slide is on thursday by nine o'clock um by 12 o'clock sorry um and then on friday guess what you're gonna go out there campaign and voting will open for you guys to actually encourage your fellow students to actually vote for you have a good healthy campaign as well and then voting will close on thursday the 16th uh, at five o'clock um, and then uh, provisional results will be announced at, at, at seven o'clock uh, on the thursday as well and then official results will be um, published and announced on friday the 17th of november at five o'clock so the rules, um, we do have a few rules and the full list of rules um, can actually be found on our website um, under the democracy committee section. So please do take a look at them. But the basic principles of the rules are do only what other candidates have an equal opportunity to do. 
treat all students, candidates and staff members with respect. And if in doubt, ask the democracy committee first because they will be able to guide you. Enforcement of the rules. So you must act within um, the election rules um, and the rulings of the democracy committee. It is your responsibility to read the rules and the rulings. So this is why we give you the link um to the democracy committee section so you can head on and actually read the rules um contravening the election rules may result in penalties or disqualifications by the democracy committee um but we hope to not have to do this <laughs> <laughs> uh timings and campaign teams so you must not public publicly declare your candidacy until the start of the campaigning period so friday the 10th november this is when the candidate profiles will become available on the su website which is why we ask you not to campaign until then. Um, you must not campaign for votes outside of the time specifically allocated for campaigning. So 9 a.m. on Friday the 10th until Thursday the 16th of November at 5 p.m. Those are your time slots to get out and campaign. Um, campaign teams, you can and definitely should get other people to campaign for you. This is the best way to get votes and also means that it's not just you having to go out and campaign for yourself. Um, with academic reps, obviously, some of you might only have a small cohort that you have to campaign to, so don't worry too much. But with NUS reps in particular, you need all students to vote for you, so definitely get a team together. Um, anyone campaigning for you must also follow the rules, and it is your responsibility to ensure that they do, and they must be a current student to be able to be part of your campaign team. So you can't get your cousins to come and, you know, campaign for you? No. <laughs> So rules on campaigning, um, candidates can only criticise opponents or other candidates for their policy platform and not for personal reasons. Sending emails to pre-existing email list is not allowed because not everybody has access to these. So the exception to this rule is to announce the society um, such other organisational endorsement, which is allowed if the endorsement has been agreed on democratically as stated in the rules. This rule does not apply to group chats, messenger or WhatsApp groups. This is due to the fact that myself, Arthur and the Democracy Committee physically will not be in all of those messengers and WhatsApp groups. So we'd not be able to police this. So you are allowed to send uh, messages into group chats, messenger and WhatsApp groups. Um, hate speech, including any language or action which is deemed racist, sexist, hem homophobic or transphobic is banned in all contexts. And this will be taken very seriously if we find out about any candidate that or can or candidate campaign team um, that is using any of this language. With slates and endorsements, um, so if you don't know what a slate is, a slate is when candidates endorse one another and run together for roles. Slates are not permitted and campaigners cannot campaign for more than one person together. Um, this is stated within the rules. Individual students and societies may declare their support for multiple candidates on social media. However, we can show you how to do this in the next slide. Um, candidates cannot endorse candidates for another role in person or on social media. Any student can endorse candidates for one or more roles being elected. Clubs and societies can endorse candidates, but they must do so democratically. So this needs to be decided on by the committee who they would like to endorse. And they can only send a single email about endorsements to their mailing list. University staff, college staff or SU staff, SU campaigns or JNMCRs may not endorse candidates. Only current student came only current Cambridge students, apologies, can campaign in elections and all people and groups can encourage voting. Um, we'll go on into a second about how campaigns and JNMCR committee members may be able to endorse candidates. Um, so when it comes to endorsing a candidate, this gives you a really good example of how you are able to if you hold a if you hold a position within a campaign or a JNMCR about how you about how students are able to actually put out an endorsement. So in this example, Anjum is running for president postgrad role and is looking for people to support her in the campaign. Zach is the MCR president at St Herbert's College. He would like to support Anjum's campaign. So what Zach can do is highlight that Zach is St Herbert's MCR president and is an official Andrum supporter. What Zach cannot do is say that St Herbert's as an MCR supports Andrum, as that is not the case and the MCR cannot endorse a candidate. So what Zach can do is highlight they have a role within the MCR and they're an official Andrum supporter, but they cannot state that the MCR is supporting as that would be an MCR endorsement. Um, if you do have any questions on slates or endorsements, please send them over following watching this briefing. 
Penalties and complaints. Um, finally, if you have a complaint or believe that someone else has broken the rules, you should inform the Democracy Committee on elections at cambridgeshu.co.uk. That is elections at cambridgeshu.co.uk. This will be in the email as well that we send over. Candidates found to be breaking the rules will be considered by the Democracy Committee. The Democracy Committee has a range of options which include but are not limited to informal private warnings, public formal warnings, requiring the, de uh, the de deletion of posts, corrections and so on suspension of campaigning for a set period. In extreme cases, the Democracy Committee can disqualify a candidate. However, they need to exhaust other means first and it needs to be a serious case for them to go to an instant disqualification. The voting system, over to you, Arthur. Ooh, the best the best bit, uh, voting. Um, I presume all of you know what voting is. Voting in this election will take place via Cambridge SU online platform. Um, it's all online. It's not old school where you have to like go to the polling station, you know, get a piece of paper and do it. No, it happens on our platform, on our website. Straightforward, simple and easy and accessible to every single student and you as a candidate. Voters number the candidates in order of preference um, for each election in which they can run or they can vote. Um, and then votes are counted using our single transferable um, voting system. The information about who can vote is based on a data feed from the university um, that is not totally immune to errors, but we can fix any that are found. If there's any issues um, around voting and some students are saying to you, um, candidate X, I can't uh, vote, um, please either email us at um, elections at cambridgesu.co.uk uh, um, or ask the students to actually email us themselves or Alternatively, they can come and visit us in the Students' Union. If you come across anything that looks wrong, again, please make sure you contact us. Feel free. We're a friendly bunch. Just come and visit us or email us. Single transferable vote. Um, what is it? It's it's a big word. What is it? Um, what it is, is to get, to get elected, you as a candidate, you need a set amount of votes known as a quarter. Right. The system works out the quarter based on the number of vacancies and the number of votes cast. Um, as these elections are all for one vacancy, the quarter is 50 percent of the vote. Um, so each voter has one vote. So each student um, has got one vote. Um, once the counting has finished, any candidate who has more first preferences votes than the quarter is elected. Right. Um, and if no if no one or no candidate reaches the quarter, then the least popular candidate is removed. Um, unfortunately, then you're removed from the ballot. Um, people who voted for them have their votes redistributed to the second um, favorite candidate or the second preference. This is the pro this process will continue until we actually find um, a, a candidate to fill this vacancy. Um, so Tash has got a job of actually going through this process. So again, if they, you know, it, it just bear with us when we are doing the counts because it's a very, very long process. Campaigning and looking after yourself. So um, Arthur, campaigning tips, what are they? Campaigning tips, Oof, there's a lot of tips, but what we've picked out, we've picked out a few good ones here but you can use as many tips as you can. Um, talking to people is a great way. However, you've got to be respectful, mindful. If people don't want to vote, please, 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 please do not go in their faces and force them to vote. Just be polite and nice um, about it. Um, and obviously, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're if you not sure, just come and ask. Um, do people know what Cambridge SU is? If they don't, please again direct them to our website. Do they know what you're running for? Just explain what you're running for. Your manifesto, as I said from the beginning, it will explain who you are, what you're doing, what you're running for. Go to the department or college um, events to reach out to a large number of students. Um, just go out to where the students are actually um, you know, situated in the, in the most um, hot spots. Um, tell your friends, your, 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 tell a friend, a friend, a friend, and a friend, and a friend to vote um, for you if they can, especially for NUS um, reps who um, students can vote for. Any, all students are eligible to vote for the NUS reps. However, 
for you know academic reps the specific groups or faculties or departments that can vote so make sure you tell your course mates to vote for you as well um talk to as many people as you can within your college and your faculty social media that's a big thing now make sure you use um social media uh, as wide as you can be very creative i can honestly say i've worked in a number of students unions and cambridge su um candidates have shown me that the, you guys can create good manifestos um I've, I've been looking through them today and best believe me you guys have really had you've got some creative manifestos up on our website that will be published as soon as possible so again carry on that creativity um you know make sure that you're you're, you're as creative as you can ask for help um get friends to support you with your campaigning um there there are more tips on our website as well just visit our website if you if, if you feel that these are not enough tips or just come to the students union again um, myself tash and the democracy the representation and democracy team will help you give you some more guidance on how to campaign looking after yourself there's too much there that i've told you about campaigning but please make sure you look after yourself. It's not all about elections. Um, elections are, necess are necessary. However, uh, make sure you look after yourself. Um, you know, elections are ne necessary public and you should expect that part of running is people talking about you. But please make sure you, you, you look after yourself as well. But you should also expect that people do that in a way that is respectful. Uh, make sure you're respectful to other individuals and uh, don't, you know, be forceful as well as i said from the beginning we will take harassment or abuse very seriously as tash said from the beginning and want you to feel we don't want you to feel you know that you, you can't speak to anybody but we will take all cases that are sent through to the students union very serious the election is is a marathon not a sprint it's okay to take breaks be careful not to burn yourself out and uh, i usually tell this to students your academics come first um, from elections please do not just focus on the elections you've got your academic side of things to focus on if you feel that you're burning out again come and talk to us we've got our advice center, our lovely advice center who can you know support you throughout your, your if, if you're, you feel that you're burning out and finally announcing the winners so um the winners will be announced online on thursday the 16th of november from 7 p.m um so that'll be online um and via emails so we'll email out to all the winners um just notifying that provisionally you have um successfully been elected um but yes there is a period of time after the announcement when results can be disputed which is why they are provisional and then the official announcement will come at 5 p.m on the 17th of november um so yeah if you have any questions, um, the email address that you will need to email them through will be in the, will be in the email that we have sent, where you will have found this link to this wonderful briefing. So, um, please do send over any questions that you might have about the briefing. Go back, rewatch, look through the rules, look through the um, look through the website pages that we we've highlighted, and we'll be sending over. Um, just get yourself clued up really um, on what is going on. But if you do still have any questions do not hesitate to reach out because we will be here to help. Thank, Thank you, you for watching. Thank you.